What's up, America? It is Wednesday, and it's a fucking beautiful day. The birds are chirping. The snakes are uh, doing what snakes do. The grass is growing. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Division Street Auto. You can catch Division Street Auto at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Give them a call at 401-723-7080. Division Street Auto is great. You can get whatever you need done on your vehicle there, you know, from brake pads to engine replacements. They do the works. They're fairly priced, but that's not why I go there. I go there because they run on honesty and integrity, and whenever I get my vehicle fixed or maintained there, I always felt like... I can trust him, you know. My, my buddy George is, runs the joint, and he takes care of me. So if you need anything with the vehicle, go check him out. You can get 10%, 10% off all the labor when you mention this podcast. And we're also brought to you by Tops Showroom and Gallery and Electrical Distributor. Dis- distributor. Distributor. Give them a call at 401-861-0695. They're at 120 Point Street in Providence, and you can go... Get them. Um, I'm sorry. Anywho, you can go to Tops. You can get whatever you need, whether it's electrical connectors, wires, PVC, EMT pipe. Um, but they also do a lot for lighting. So you can get LED lighting, whether it's indoor, outdoor, landscape lighting, um, under cabinet lighting. And if you don't have time to go down there, you know, maybe you're running a business, maybe you got too much going on. They'll come out and do a field consultation for you and really kind of streamline that process to make it easy for you. So go check them out. Tell them the J2 podcast sent you. We're also brought to you by Onlyville Tire. Onlyville Tire is located at 6 Plainville Street in Providence. You go see the boss name. Her name is Do- Go see the boss lady. Her name is Dory. They've been in business now, I think, since 1923, which is coming up on just 100 years which is insane that a local family-owned business has been able to sustain themselves in a, I would assume it's a competitive market. I mean, when I think tire shops, I think, you know, not the small guys. So the fact that she's able to keep keep shop open there is impressive. And whether you need new tires, used tires, you need to replace some tires, anything tires you think Onlyville Tire, go see Dory, tell her where you heard from us. And next up, we got JW and Son Construction uh, property management. They do commercial, they do residential, any kind of work you may need done for the home or business, whether it's, you know, cabinet making or I don't know if they do pools. I'm sure they do. Whatever it is, you know, new, um, renovating, hook them up. All right. Give them a call at 401 401- 487-4134. Sorry, I got my co-host making me laugh. That's JW and Sun uh, Construction. Tell them what you need. They can answer your questions much better than I can. Last but not least, we got DDP. And no, I don't mean Diamond Dallas Page. I mean Donkey Dodgers Poker. Donkey Dodgers Poker is a great way to get out of the house and have some fun and maybe play a game that you've been interested in playing. You know, poker. A lot of people play online but never live. Uh, DDP is a great way to go out, have a good night for twenty dollars. You can get a you know a, a dinner, you can play some cards and interact with some people that have some experience. But it's just a fun, casual, friendly way to learn the game or play the game, and even win some money. Every night they have um, cash prizes for the winner and top two or three, however you do. Uh, but more importantly, they have s- certain events that if you play and you do well, or if you play enough, you can actually win a seat into the main event which is a $10,000 buy-in. So if you know anything about poker, it's kind of the Super Bowl of poker. Um, Just go check out DDP on Facebook. There's all the information there. They run at least one event every night, and they're all over the state. So check them out. Let's get it. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. Ricky, thanks for coming through, man. What up, Rick? What's going on, guys? So, Ricky, guys, if you don't know, he owns Legends Pub and Grub in Cranston. Um, I've been there a couple times myself. Two or three. Two or three. A fucking a month. I would say I'm, I wouldn't call myself a regular, but I'm definitely a repeat customer. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely, a regular. Over the years, months. Has it been years? I like yeah. to think that I've only been playing poker for like a year or two. Well, but you, it's you play like you have. Yeah, true. <laughs> Fair enough. I bring that up because uh, just to plug uh, our, one of our sponsors real quick, Donkey Dodgers Poker is regularly at Legend. So 
It's two reasons to go there. Good food, good drinks, DDP. Speaking of food, that corned beef sandwich <laughs> was fucking banging. Like, that was, like, probably mm. the best. Cor- you know, I've been to Irish joints around whatever. In Ireland? I'm, yeah, well, I haven't had corned beef in Ireland. Let me move but a little so I can see you. It's not very popular in Ireland. Oh, it was. Am I good? It was great. It was, uh, that was probably one of the better. <laughs> We went corned beef about sandwich. 325 pounds of corned beef that week for St. Patty's Day. Holy shit. I mean, uh, well, I say holy shit. Is that, is that a lot for... Uh, we did about 350 last year, so a little off this year, but that's... Same mm-hmm. thing? It's a lot of fucking corned beef. I mean, you guys got to, like, you know, <laughs> the, the thick beef. slabs yeah, of corned yeah, beef. Yeah, it wasn't like I mean, fucking... We don't shave it. We cut it a little oh, that's, thick. Uh, it was like Whoever's idea that was to do it... You What's need to promote. A lot of places do shave. They shave it. And stuff. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. It's, not it's, it's like roast beef for like pastrami ish. And all of our corned beef gets cooked right in Guinness. So, oh, that's fucking awesome. Straight up Irish. Who's, no. Whose idea was that? Who's like Pat? He used to own Fitzpatrick's. He, he's wow. a cook, cook for me now. And that's how he did it there. So we do it over here the same way. Nice. Now, nice. you wouldn't. Legends is not really an Irish pub, right? No, it's just but a you're Irish. sports pub. There's a like big ass Irish flag in there when yeah, you go in there. Yeah, it was given to us a while back. So I like that. Aaron Gobra. Do you guys get the um, UFC fights there when McGregor fights or no? No. They fucking whack you if you... What is it? Because they, they, they pay-per-view per based on capacity, capacity right? Capacity, the amount of TVs. That's fucking that. outrageous. That's how the cover charge, and I don't like doing that. So. It's fucked up. That's fucking crazy. So, so like, if I, I rented out my house... house for 100 bucks. Yeah, 100 right? bucks. there, it's like five grand. Right? That's it's fucking... Insane. Well, because that's what they expect. They say, hey, you're going to charge people 15 to get in. Yeah. You can hold 250 people in here, but... Fuck you guys. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah. Why does that matter how much money I make? make on you, yeah, so. that's that's wild, man. Like those taxes and everything, the same shit. So. How, how long have you guys been over in, in, in Cranston? Like, when did you guys start? Uh, when, when did that business? Five years. Five years? It was a bar before I took it, but we've been there about five years. Oh, nice. I don't, for some reason, I thought it was longer than that. Maybe it's because it's it seems like a state it, it was a bar before that so that makes sense yeah but it what seems it like it's been guys? there for a while it was christopher's pub in delhi but he a never shitty really name. had a delhi pot oh he was half ass christopher's pub in delhi no delhi no they got rid of the delhi like at a probably a year and a half prior to that do you do you oh, like owning a bar is that like was that your like um not dream but i mean is it a passion of yours is it, or is it just like a business <laughs> venture that you're saying hey this is a way to make money i'm gonna do this it's something I always wanted to do, is either that or a liquor store. So, something that's like. And I had the money. So, you're not an alcoholic, though. We can square that I out. Mean, right? He's like, I didn't care what I was going to do as long as it involves selling sure, alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just like beer, you know. Yeah, right? Who doesn't? It's but like it depression proof, too. To do, and I had the money that. You were Erica, was, or you mean. So, is it your family, or did you and Erica actually. It was me, basically. Oh, so it was you. So. Okay, yeah. But nice. I had the money that time. I lost my job that I was at before. I had the money, so it was for sale. The price was right. I jumped in. And if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do it again. Why? <laughs> yeah. well, why not? It's just a hassle. And Is it a pain city, in the balls? They don't make it easy on you either. They're up your ass for everything. Taxes. If, if I buy this liability, if I buy this counter at a store, I pay taxes on it. They come in do a tangible tax. I gotta pay taxes on it again. Not good. It's, uh, it's inventory. I, it's it's like, insane. Yeah. Everything like boss tools. No matter what you have in there, they charge you taxes again. On it, <laughs> just like kind of like the car tax, like, like a property year, like, tax, just yeah. owning. Man, that's fucked. It up. depreciates every year. Never mind, you're actually just, sale, just aside point. from your like federal tax and your yeah. state taxes. Just yep. yeah, I, I'm not a tax expert, but I know taxes suck and yep. they try to whack you for everything. They do. But so five years ago, you started. It wasn't really a dream, but fuck, you had the money, took the risk. Tell me, like when it, when you were getting it off the ground. Did it seem like, was it a smooth transition from Christopher's, like the old bar, into yours? Or obviously you rebranded everything. <laughs> He's like, nope. Did you gut Not it and there. start fresh? No, or well, We got it. He closed actually on St. Patrick's Day, like five years ago, whatever mm-hmm. it was. That was his, he went through a divorce and whatever. I'm not going to get into his business, but. And he just wanted out. He already did, so. Kind of. (laughs) Well, he was a dick anyway, but. Jesus. (laughs) Hey, it is what it is. He screwed me over, so. I'll fuck him then. You don't fuck with legends. Sold me the place. Everything went through. Then come to find out, he takes off to Florida. Didn't have some tax paid, so I couldn't get my liquor license. I had to wait for one this time. Paying rent. Doing updates to the place and whatever. Wow. I can't open. For three months. It's so. Fuck that the 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 state puts that like there so ultimately there was like a lien on his liquor license. Yeah, he did something with some whatever tax it was, and 
took off the flyer and couldn't get in touch with him. He's it's just ignoring It's my crazy that that affects you, the new owner. Yeah. You have nothing to do with, no ties to him, really. Right? You paid for the place. Yep. But. And it happened, and we sat there for three months just doing updates and whatever and not being able to open. Is it hard to own a bar? Is it like so? So give us a behind the scenes kind of like so somebody like me, I never owned a bar. I have no, I haven't the fucking slightest clue what actually entails. Like I know like you have a kitchen, so I even, I know that even owning a restaurant, let alone a restaurant and bar, like you got to be there to prep foods and all this other shit and fucking food handling and clean. We're open seven days a week, so I mean the kitchen's open from eleven. I mean you must literally almost live night. there. And we the, for the first two years, yeah, I pretty much lived there. Because you didn't want to hire people. It, well, you was, you it, have it, to hire people, hard. but you, you want to keep have people. But you got to cut costs as well. So you're pretty now much I'm a full of, and a half time employee. Much as I used to be now, because I actually have some good employees now, so so mm. I can actually get away for a little while. Yeah. Right. So, are, so are you, are you the the man? You're the CEO. The well, not the CEO, but I mean like the general manager. I guess is that yeah. like the owner. The yeah. Yeah, like I could, you didn't I mean, hire somebody to take. And I yeah. do it all. Okay, all right, gotcha. That's kind of helps out a lot with the taxes and all that stuff. Yeah, she handles she bartends. The, front of the house stuff. I handle most of the back of the house stuff. And, and it works work out together, so that helps out a lot. Solid, solid team. Nice little duo ski. H- have you ever seen uh, in, in like obviously owning a bar? I'm sure you see a lot of bullshit. You probably hear a lot of bullshit. See a lot of bullshit. What's probably the craziest thing in your bar that has happened? Off the top of your head. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, let it be in let a it, bar and alcohol's involved. We do yeah, a lot of asshole hunting. I'm faces, sure. So. Let that marinate. I want to talk like I want to talk about the startup a little bit more. You when you dealt with all the bullshit, when you what was like the when it finally got cleared and you could open, so your grand opening, what was that like? You know, like how did you get the clearance? Did the state I tell you? I off my shoulders. We finally got it all done. He fixed his problem he had. We was able to open. We did it in the afternoon. We opened on the weekend of St. Mary's Feast. Oh, oh so nice. you. you get a that was huge. Right from the beginning. Yeah. So we did like a soft open on, let's say, a Thursday night, I think it was. And we were way over ex- overcrowded what i expected for yeah. the first night a oh i'm sure friends and people anticipating because we've been windows been papered up for six months on three months now windows been papered up right so mm. now once you finally take that paper off and everybody's like oh shit new place let's check it out yeah we got swarmed we got killed that night it was insane yeah good kill though in a good way right? yeah, yeah 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 no problems no, no nothing not at all nope not that night i mean the old owner walked in and he wanted thought he owned the place still but it didn't happen so <laughs> right it's interesting <laughs> that he was around taking pictures <laughs> and this and that i'm like it's like, bro, you know, you don't live here anymore, you know? You got to hit the road. That's it. Nice, no doubt. All right, so you got started. Now, was the kitchen open right from the rip? Did you yes. add that on nope, after? the kitchen was open. We bought new equipment for the kitchen, and right from day one, we had it rolling. So the tax is obviously a pain in the dick to deal with. Now, when you serve food, isn't that like a whole other element? Because you have to deal with... um. Like not food inspectors, but well, something the health department. Like the health department. Even if you didn't have food, they still come in for the bar. For bar oh, really? As well. But is they it? That out and stuff too. Do they hold cool because you're a bar? Do they hold? Um, if you serve food, they hold you to the same standards yeah. as a restaurant, right? Absolutely. So the food has to be stored at X temperature. Yeah. Your yeah, fucking, cool of course, yeah. Your dishwashing, the water has to be sanitization. Pro- all kinds so of much. I've worked in a kitchen, so I'm I'm not familiar with the laws as much, but I know that. They pay attention to that shit. Oh, you know, absolutely. there's thermometers everywhere. Yeah, they come in and probe everything. Like the temperatures All right, so to check your food real life scenario. You're in the back cooking. Nobody's, you know, nobody's back there with you. There's no cameras. Somebody orders chicken. You drop it on the floor. How long can it stay on the floor until you cook it and serve it? It goes right in the trash. Come on, man. <laughs> I worked at a D'Angelo's when I was younger, dude. Or Papa Gino's. That's what you and, used uh, to do. Oh, <laughs> fuck. So I, I hey, I have, I, have a steak, right. I have a steak and cheese, right? And we're fucking, it's a dinner rush, dude. I got the steak and cheese. I'm 20 years, nah, not even 18, 19 years old. I'm a kid. I'm still new to the job. I don't want to fuck up. The boss is there. It's busy. I have the steak and cheese. I'm going to put it on the bun. <laughs> Hits the ground. I do the old look around, you know, like, oh, fuck. My manager doesn't make eye contact with me, walks by me. He goes, use it. And I'm like, done. You ain't got to tell me twice. Fucking scoop that shit That's up. Horrible, serve it. Man. Oh, it's terrible. That's what do you want to do? What the fuck, man? I, 
They've already that it's already just laid. Now he did it for fucking, every one. I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> now it's just do them all the same. The, everybody's like, "Wow, tell the chef I love the texture in this sandwich." Just <laughs> throw a little kick to yeah, it. I'm like, "Yeah, crunch. that's fucking that sand." My sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this was and maybe man, you've been a Pats fan. This was up at Route One. I worked on a uh, right across from Gillette, pretty much. Fucking Papa Gino's yeah, over I there. Never been to that one, so it wasn't me. But yeah, dude, gee, when it, I was so nervous because I'm like, "Fuck!" Like, I, you always when you're in the in the trenches like that, the pressure, you know, like I say, pressure's on. But like, if you've ever worked in a kitchen, the dinner rush is like there's no time to fuck up you know what i mean like it's you're as right. busy as it is you're usually short-staffed people are starving you know it's packed so when i made that mistake i thought worst case scenario like fuck i'm gonna get fired i'm gonna get fired this person's not gonna get their food the restaurant's gonna shut down who knows what? so i was nervous well that's what i mean you start fucking the going yeah. <laughs> so i pan you know I'm, I'm i'm about to panic when he ever said use it it was like a fucking weight off my shoulders i'm like my boss is the man like that was it, man. I'll just imagine how many times he did that. Oh, right. for sure. And how many bro. times other people have done it, and he just goes, use it. <laughs> like they're just There's probably, more often, sandwiches out probably there. more often than not fucking meats hitting the ground there, kind of like when I take a piss. Is that the angel still open? <laughs> I don't <laughs> right. know, dude. George could probably check it out. <laughs> um, all right, so that's cool, though. That's kind of how Legends got its start. Uh, and have you changed much over the course of five years? I mean, I, I've seen it for the last two years, and I've seen, you know, like, new coats of paint, slight renovations to the inside. It's You're not... A lot of places will let it really get run down and, you know, get the carpet uh, torn up. Whatever the case is, it seems like your philosophy is keeping it neat instead of letting it get destroyed and then rebuilding it completely. We try to do it at least once a year, usually around July, because we shut down for July 1st to the 4th, usually like four or five days. And that's when you try to throw some fresh paint on, maybe do the floors over it again. No doubt. Just to keep it up nice. to keep it fresh. Yeah, I mean, it works. Like, it's noticeable. When, they come back, you know, when you change that fucking room place. from red to blue, that was beautiful. Big deal. It changed the whole fucking difference. feel. Yeah. I mean, that's because when I go there, that's usually the room that I'm playing cards in there. But it was like it livened it up. I wonder if the paint actually helps it stay cool, too. Am I retarded for even asking that? Uh, like, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> like, it's not like, outside. You know, it's not like black but and it, white. Well, I mean, fucking, is, does, does like black or red thing uh shit like harness heat better does it hold insulate heat i don't fucking I, know what i'm saying <laughs> but hey maybe it was a mind trick it felt like when i'm in there it's blue it's cool in here it's cool it was a cool color so i painted it red to be hotter yeah you know? man well fucking saying. i don't know man i don't know what i'm saying at this point so you know i think a lot of people they have a dream of own like whenever you ask somebody when they're younger hey if you owned a business what would it be they'd be like i, I want to own a bar they think it's kind of like just say, you walk around and talk to people and Towel money just flows shoulder. in. Yeah, just, Towel over your shoulder. Yeah, exactly. Right, it's, Money just flows in or whatever. Not what is it all. <laughs> no. I know. I'm sure it's a <laughs> lot of fucking work. Has there ever been like a time, let's say on a busy night, a weekend or something like that, where it was so busy and let's say you can like almost feel the crowd getting rowdy and you're like, fuck, like we, it's not like we have, you know, police officers here and security you know, bouncers or whatever, anything like that. Because sometimes bouncers can actually uh, give a intimidating feel to a, an establishment mm. as opposed to a security feel. <clears throat> Has there ever been a time when you're just yeah, like, I mean, oh, man, I don't know what to do. Like I said, the bar with alcohol and vile people it's always the balls and shit happens. You can usually try to feel that person out. Yeah. So if I'm in the kitchen and then whoever's bartending, they'll usually, hey, come out here and watch so-and-so. He. Mm. Has that look in his eye? <laughs> well, this yeah, guy, yeah, this he's... guy's giving me a bad vibe. Keep an eye on this person. So you just pay more attention to that person and nip it in the butt before something stupid happens. I mean, yeah, we've had arguments, we've had fights. It's it's gonna I mean, happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Right. But immediately, as long as you end it, get it real quick, get him out, then all right, let's go. <laughs> is is that the the kind of uh, what what what's the word I'm looking for? Is that the, I guess, the, sh the business strategy to, like, okay, so, like, if there is a problem, just get them out of the business yeah, as soon as possible. No, it's out. a fight club because in the back. Then, again, <laughs> Guys, take it Bring out. them in the back. <laughs> and take them to the kitchen. <laughs> well, no, some people would try to, you know, like, would take the approach of, hey, let's talk to them. Let's, like, you know, I, I'm, well, I'm with you. I'm kind of like, yeah, just get them out of the fucking place. If it escalates, then you got to have innocent bystanders getting involved. Mm. And then it just gets more of a mess at that point. You don't want right, right. there's oh. people. All it costs time. People get hurt. costs money. But just so like the viewers know, like obviously this is not a this is not a rowdy place or anything like that. I don't want to give that a percep uh, at perception at all. This is actually a you know a pretty chill, um, welcoming 
bar. It's a great location too. I mean, right there. Plenty of parking. Yeah, absolutely. It's so nice that you have so much parking. I've definitely went to places before, and I'm like, yo, this looks like a dope bar. Gonna check it out. Can't find a place to park. Fuck this place. Not coming back. Not even getting out of my car. Do you know, um, you know, Bar 101 and John John Atwood? Many times, dude. Like I'm like this, and I live 90 seconds from there. I've cruised down. I'm like, oh, let's stop in here tonight. Me and my girl. I'm like, can't find a place to park. Let's go to Corner Pockets. I'm over it. Wow, wow. that's nice. Nice. The Av, the Av, they're a good spot too. You ever seen chicks make out at your bar? We've seen plenty of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Mulk, I'm all fight. Okay, we're watching that as well, so it's fine. That's awesome. <laughs> He's like, see, I encourage it. It's I like if chicks you. make out, they get a discount on the drinks. I like it. It's- You'd be surprised what you see sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. I guess that's what I'm trying to really trying to surface here because you, you you have probably seen things that the average person just you know. Wow, well, you're right. Doesn't see like you know like it's anything can happen at a bar and you're sitting there. Who knows, just being like, who knows hey, what this girl's hands doing right now? You yes, know, right, you exactly. That's what I'm. Yeah. No <laughs> let's not get into too much detail. No, let's um, get into of, that detail <laughs> <laughs> of uh, you know who makes an ass of itself at his bar. Um, Lord knows but is there <laughs> is there anything that you know for not just as a bar owner but a business owner that you you're doing now that's you know successful and it's fine, but when you were trying to implement whether it was a policy or a change that was really a struggle, and is only successful now because you you know were persistent with making it happen. Not that I can think of the top of my. I head. probably worded that as complicated as possible. By the yeah, way, you kind of lost yeah, me there. I, I was being grilled for a second. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Is this a setup?" No, I mean, like, what was something that was really difficult, and maybe you thought, like, "Oh, this probably isn't going to work out." Like, was there any roadblock everywhere you thought this? It's, like, might, it's you, not just. It's just not for me. Always or? paid your taxes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't have a choice because yeah. they will come and show. I you know. Them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I bet, dude. They'll send a constable right up in there and say, "Hey." So Shut this tomorrow, fucking place down. Done, you're good. <laughs> really? Is that we'll be dude? here tomorrow to just put a lock on this door until you can get this shit straightened out. That's right, so right, wild, You don't want to be in that predicament, so. Avoid it. No. Now, what, um, how, like, there are so many bars. You know, so many bars, so many restaurants, even in that small um, area. How do you stay competitive? You know, like, how do you, or do you try to compete with other bars, or do you? I don't really try to compete with any of the bars in my area. It's, I do my own thing. Who's your biggest competitor? I mean, in that area, we have, uh, what, five bars in a matter of probably a half a mile apart from each other. Hmm. Right on the corner there. Uh, we'll have, in that area, Amadeo? we have, we have um, well, he's right next door, yep. Yeah. Amadeo, we got Thirsty Beaver, we got the He's Blue, a cool guy, though, We got Amadeo. 39 West, Knightsville Stadium. Th- those are all in walking distance from right. my place. So right. there's plenty of bars in that one area. We just need more people to drink. <laughs> yeah. Do you, yeah. is the philosophy, like, more to, like, hey, come here instead of there, or is it just like there's enough people to go around and people are just going to go where they want to go? We're all different in our own way over there in that area, I think. I mean, I have, during the day, I have a select group of regulars. They're an older crowd. The bar back, flies. Retired, like yeah. retired mailmen and stuff like that. These guys need somewhere to go during the day. They're there, every, they're there five days a week. Yeah, I was gonna, I've, I've been wow. a few few and times during the want. day. We have, our regulars are very consistent. They are there four or five times a week, sometimes twice a day. I mean, which right, it's great. Twice a day. And they're never a problem. They're always very consistent. What yeah. would be the? What would you say is the best thing about owning a bar? Like, what, what what's what's the best perk? What's the best like kind of? It's pretty cool. Like, I drink for free, bro. <laughs> well, that I mean, well, you have a retard or something. I, I, like, I guess that's <laughs> the same reason everybody ever thinks, "Hey, I, I want to own a bar." I, I, the way what, what I'm asking is. <laughs> The, not the obvious yeah, stuff. George? Obviously, you get to eat your own food and drink your own drinks. Obviously, but I'm saying like something that let's say uh, uh, our listeners or our our Ricky audience Ricky doesn't you, wouldn't necessarily know. Like they just wouldn't you know they wouldn't think about that. Like oh that's pretty cool that you have that perk or whatever it is. Well, for me, like I it's said, constant partying. For free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's always a party. But for me, I'm different in a way. I guess. Yeah. If I don't have to be there, I don't want to be there. I'd rather not I can sit understand there and that. drink all day. Yeah, I'd of rather course. go to another bar and have a few beers there, or go somewhere else to eat. Because that's your place of business and work, time, and I don't want to be there, like enjoying. Well, not to mention, you, right. it's it's almost as the owner. Like even if you're there not working, if if I see you there, you're working. Yeah, you know, like most people don't separate you as a person or you as a bar owner so if you know if eric is busy or your staff is busy they need a drink right and you're naturally going 
if you see somebody waiting for a drink, it's, I can imagine that you're almost seeing that like, hey, that's money they're no, no, trying to give clock. me. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's money that could be in my pocket. Like, I'm going to go take it. That's a lot of reasons why if I'm not scheduled to be there, I will not be there. It's, yeah, I'm that's smart. stay away. That makes sense. Like, especially, let's say, Patriots run an away game. And people, oh, come on, watch the game here? Yeah? No, I can't because I can't enjoy it because right. I'm going to be helping so-and-so do this. I'm going to jump in the kitchen and yep. help with that. Oh, the trash is full. Take this out. Yeah, someone before you know, you just worked an eight-hour hour shift. Like, you go do that? <laughs> right. So I can't enjoy a game there. So no, I'll go watch it somewhere else and stay home. <laughs> Toilet clogs. You going to handle that? I have. Man, people Most really. I was going to say, dude. I, <laughs> really? <clears throat> the, the, is, that, the, is that, you mean like, you mean that's real? truthful. <laughs> wow. Not, that, not DDP that's though. That's oh, you players. dirty that's motherfucker. Your <laughs> bathroom constantly gets clogged. I was going to, first of all, who shits at the bar? Get, the fuck man have some decency like go home it. i've never taken a shit in your bar i, I promise you i just can't do it like or, or i know that i know the type of shits it. that i take <laughs> and i live eight I, minutes away i, I don't even think it's shit <laughs> like, dude hey, hey, what, what about Sarah throw up you, people oh, that's happened numerous times. i can i can understand oh, throw up because man. it's almost like oh shit you're sick you can't control it but when your shit's brewing like you kind of know in advance and yeah but what if you live far away then you do Go home and shit. Like, your night's over. Like, I just... Dude, if I'm out shopping and I have to take go a shot, shit, you're, you fucking That's sit like in a public pot. Then go back. Go just, shit and go so back. Go all in. I'm all in. Yeah, I figure I'm something. I'm all in. I got to shit, Maybe bro. it's just... It's, it might be just me, but, like, when I shit, man, it's like... To me, it's an event. You know what I mean? Like, I'll light some He's candles in there. I take off... Yeah, I take off my shirt. I go in the bathroom. Seance. I put a fucking... I put Joe it's Rogan's podcast on. And I sit down and I shit, you know, for a good 15, 20 minutes. Like, it's it's a fucking... Oh, it's, oh, a, it's a... Man, it's a it's been it's been a, yeah, for a while. Yeah, it's a nice little... I'm not a small really guy. I take good shits. Area. But, you know, it's a nice... It's it's my sanctuary. You know, I, I go in there. Some people meditate. Some people do yoga. I have... On the toilet? Yeah, I have a good shit. You know, I'll fucking put the shower on hot. Get some steam in there. It's bro, you're fucking nasty, bro. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Guess guys going to do it. No, you got right vents. Now. You got to fucking throw you the fan on. It? Like yeah, you're it's, putting it's, the steam in there and everything. <laughs> it's just my time, I, and I can't do that if I'm it's at a bar. It's my time to enjoy my <laughs> shit. <laughs> now you flush as your shit. You it do doesn't even smell. Flush? All right, oh, I do. I do yeah, multiple yeah. courtesy flushes. Yeah. Not, and it's only courtesy for myself too. I'm in there. I don't want to smell it. As soon as, dude, the first, the first time I hear a drop, it's flushed. It's flushed. Hey, if I ever leave and I forget, if I say I'm done in the toilet and you notice, oh, you didn't flush, there's nothing but toilet paper in there because my shit gets flushed as it's coming out. It's flush, flush, done, wipe. You're flushing <laughs> and it's flushing, same time. That's all I do, Hey, man. sometimes when you got to take a shit, you got to take a shit, man. You have to drive home and take a shit. That's what I'm telling you. Oh. I would drive home and take <laughs> a shit. Home, take a I shit would, there's a bathroom right there. But it's a, first of all, so choose one. <laughs> I just, yeah, but think, I think of... I, I play poker with people. First of all, these chips are filthy. Everybody's touching these chips. I see dirt under people's fingernails all the time. I know you don't clean your fingernails. You hope that it's dirt. I, yeah. So <laughs> you're not going to convince me that <laughs> if you're fi- shit, who knows? everybody sees your fingernails. If you don't take the time to make sure they're clean, there's no way your ass is clean. And if you're going to sit, Where are you, going you don't with even. This, bro? <laughs> because why am I going to sit on a toilet seat that he just sat on with his dirty ass? So He's you, not putting toilet paper down. So you and I'm never not shit in public? In emergencies, I have like an That's absolute emergency. But listen, we're not talking. I'm talking like, hey, I'm at, casual the, I'm at the hospital. I just had a baby. My girls, whatever the case is, if I cannot leave, then I'll take a shit in a public restroom. Or you're, get a fucking motel or something. Bro, I'll pay $60 for that. a shit. You'd be in a position where you're you calling it a night just because you got to go shit. He just said he'll pay sixty dollars. Fucking motel or something. <laughs> motel six. I need a room for about. Do you rent rooms by uh, third third hours, twenty minutes, <laughs> whatever the fuck you need? But I think think about the people that some of the nastiest motherfuckers. I can't imagine my ass touching something their about? ass just touch. I'm not gonna say names, man. He's right here for God's sakes. <laughs> But anyway, where were we man. going with that? I forgot. Oh, so you got to unclog that shit. Absolutely. God, that's, you ever had you, throw up oh, and shit? Man. That's what happens. I throw up. It's throw up. So All right. Gets, gets and you know what? Hold on one sec. Hold on. Suck I got too, a, a so. great question. If you have to choose, right? You have to choose um, bathroom full of shit or a bathroom full of throw up. What would you rather clean? Shit, because I hope you can't both in the toilet. <laughs> Fair. And it thro- shit smells, obviously. But throw up just kind of has that smell where you immediately are almost throwing up yourself. All right. You know, like, have you ever it, been so drunk that you have to do both? Like you're oh, hungover like, and you're like, like, like man, the, I don't even chick, know what to do. What's that movie? Is it uh, Knocked Up? Where she's like, oh, oh, I got to throw up. And she sneezes it, but she yeah, shits, shits all over the, the fucking wall. That's right. <laughs> That's one of the funniest scenes ever, dude. You're like, damn, she's going to yak. And she's like, oh, I'm better. 
She just leans over and that is like the worst fucking feeling in the world when you're hungover. Like being hungover sucks, obviously. You mean being nauseous and having being to nauseous shit. and having to shit at the same time, and you're just like, Ooh. all right, if I sit on the toilet, I'm gonna throw up on my lap, or if I put my face in the toilet, I'm gonna <laughs> shit on my floor. So what do you do? Uh, you just stretch your asshole over to the sink. <laughs> you, you just take a shit and grab a Obviously. bucket. <laughs> take a bucket. I love those. Uh, you ever the see, obvious answer. You ever, s- you like. ever see the memes where it's like how you shit in a ga- gas station bathroom and it's a dude like spreading his hands out, touching one wall and his legs are on the other wall. So he's like elevated <laughs> and he's like pissing on the wall and shitting on the ceiling. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's how gas station bathrooms are. But I've, I've seen that, that uh, functional bathroom pretty bad, man. And it's like, dude, I don't. If I go to, like, I won't lift the seat up, you know what I mean? Like, I just go and take a piss. But if I... You're talking if, about listen, other people. Hold on. If, if I, you know, if I dribble a little bit on the seat, I still wipe it. You know, even if it's a couple of sprinkles, I still wipe it. So the fact that some people could just, like... Bro, I feel like they're just pissing everywhere. <laughs> like, yo, that's, that's right. on the wall. Like, why Some people can't even wall? see their dick. Yeah. That's the problem. You, you don't need to... Listen, th- that's no excuse. You it don't is, need to be able to see, see your you dick. You can't grab it. You don't need to be able to see your dick. You just need to be able to, to know see where, where you're aiming. You need to be able to see where the piss is hitting. You don't need to even see anything yeah, or grab it. If the if piss is hitting there, just redirect. What if it comes redirect. out and hits over there, well, now you got piss over there. Then back up. Angle well, your yeah, but I know the piss is already over there. The piss is there. You, yeah. Then wipe it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think just by the volume, uh, the amount of people that are in that function room, and et cetera, et cetera, that obviously there's there's always going to be you can't keep up that like you'd have to no. literally hire a fucking a, a century. You ever consider that? <laughs> you go to a strip club or anything? That, oh, the, yeah, some nightclub cologne and fucking yeah, you fucking hit out a little Oma <laughs> have Oma with a little moist <laughs> towel left. Everybody that comes a out fucking dude. hat <laughs> have a towel wrapped on. It's so arm. funny. I uh, I remember one time I was looking for a job and uh, I was a little younger, maybe like nineteen or twenty, and then I saw a valet. You know, like nightclub valet, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. Like, just park cars. It's an easy gig. Like, running back and forth, get tips. Click on the link. That's what they call the bathroom attendant. It was like a nightclub valet. It was just like you know, assist customers with hand towels and cologne. I'm like, what the fuck? You're the official <laughs> shaker. Some, some condoms and chewing <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. So here you go, bud. Here you go. <laughs> it's wild. Like, man. No, no, that's the condom. Take that out of your mouth. You remember being younger and going into like. If you had to go into like Stop and Shop or Walmart or something, they had those machines where you could pop a quarter in and they'd have condoms in them. You ever see those? Oh yeah, those like truck stops. My brother mm-hmm. actually just got mm-hmm. one. He wants me to put it in the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> really? You should. It's like a novelty kind of thing. <laughs> They're twenty five cents. You, you need yeah, more than that for a condom. Too much money. How much is a pack? I haven't used a condom in like twelve years. Well, twenty five cent condom. See, the thing is though, if it breaks, it's going to cost you fucking hundreds. George, of thousands how much is the how much is the average well, how much, how much <laughs> is the average thing, pack of condoms? Bathroom, I'm going to poke a hole every fourth one, so we're going to see what. Oh man, <laughs> oh, that's huh? horrible. Five hundred dollars? What? No, it's five hundred dollars, bro. What did for you what? just say for a pack of condoms? What? No, I said like five or ten dollars. It depends. Yeah, you, you don't use condoms, you fucking nasty you bastard. You got a pack for like I don't know four bucks for three of them or something. I don't know. So you can't. Do you think that's? We're all like, yeah, we don't fucking use condoms. Well, I mean, we're all in monogamous. I, well, we hope, anyways. We don't know shit. What are the girls doing right now, huh? Where are all the girls at? Who I don't knows? Know. They're using but condoms. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably one of. I, to me, that's my. Forget the kids. Forget the meals. Not having used condoms is probably the best. Um, not having used benefit. condoms. Benefit. Not having <laughs> yeah, to use. use not condoms. having to <laughs> use condoms. Listen, you got to save money when you can. <laughs> not having to use condoms, condoms is probably the best benefit of being in a relationship. It's you been so long. His laundry room, he's got them all hanging. Oh man, <laughs> the used Come ones. On. <laughs> like, hey, don't use that one. It's still wet. <laughs> I just use a glove, and I just every every time I use <laughs> it, I just sink <laughs> <laughs> every day of the week. And then Saturday, you're like, mm, not today, babe, not today. I turn it inside out. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> no, I can it's picture it's it. Pre lubed. <laughs> yeah, no, that shit ain't lube at that point, dude. Now it's fucking hard caked on. I can't even imagine cleaning up shit and throw up and piss and. You know, because, like, I, I used to host my own poker game. That's only 10 people, right, in my, you know, it's using mm. my facilities in, in the house or wherever, and I used to have to clean up shit. I can't imagine hundreds of people over a course of a day. Man, me Sunday on an average like, Sunday. Fuck, you man. You got plays in that room for the most part. Especially when they're there all day and they've been drinking since early. Yes. Now they're your drunk. Now they're sloppy up. shit at that point. <laughs> you sloppy, dirty motherfuckers, you. The other reason, too, is... uh. That I couldn't shit in a, especially in the the way that 
your spot is set up is it's right there in the mix of the poker game. So the way this room is, it's a function room. There's probably about 30 people in there. And the bathroom, yeah, the bathroom isn't like away from it. It's 10 steps. You know, so people are going to see you go in the bathroom, be in there for, you know, well, if I rush it, you, if I rush it, if I rush it, you be a quick 8 to 12, point. 8 to 12, I can get in and out of there if I need to, you know? Hey, you were in the military. Be tactful. Hold you got to prepare. You go in there. dog before you fucking. You leave, and ready. then that place is going to, you know, you can courtesy flush all you want, but sometimes, you know, the, the stench is just too relevant, too uh, prevalent. There's probably a bottle. People of come out of there. What kind of podcast is this? I'm going to be fucking, I'm so nervous that everybody will be like, you just took a shit. And now that's going to be the talk. Josh just took a shit. That's going to be Josh. the talk of the so night. I'm not gonna... Josh is going for 20 minutes. You know what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. Nah, it's at least 40 bathroom. minutes because I'm going home. Oh, <laughs> I'm going home and coming back. I'm like, are my chips still in play? What's going yeah. on here? No, I'm sorry. I'm, I've never had a problem <laughs> in there. And, you know. What's a shiny head? We, we went Again, there not too long, though. <coughs> Whoa. Just have a, a drink and... Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, he, I've never been that to... That fucking sandwich he got, that... um that corned beef sandwich dude that was like when i first started doing i'm doing that keto diet so like no bread no pasta and shit and he ordered that bro and it made me just reevaluate and think of not doing that diet and saying what the <laughs> fuck? what's a heart attack like that sandwich looks delicious it did look I'll banging though. this week <laughs> yeah nah, so it, it's good let me ask you this do do your friends and family uh are they supportive of your business or or do they expect you know free drinks free nah, they're all very supportive oh, okay good That's so they good. come in and they just pay yeah <laughs> I I, yep. I read um you know like just fucking scrolling Twitter or whatever. One of the best things that I my favorite memes is if you have a friend or somebody that just started a business, if they charge five dollars for something, fucking pay the five dollars. Don't ask for a discount. You know that's how you support. Like too many people when they find out their friends are in in an industry, they say, oh, I'm gonna go there for the hookup, which I do, but I go because I expect that I'm going to get great service, you know? Like, my friend uh, does T-shirts, and I don't go to him saying, hey, can I get a deal on the T-shirts? I go, hey, I need this many T-shirts made. And the, whatever the price is, is just the price, you know? I'm not going to ask him for a discount. I just, you know, like, I benefit by him, you know, communicating with me kind of informally, willing to meet me for the shirts, or whatever the case is, like... Well, there can be a, a back scratching going on, like, you know, hey, you, you hook me up, I'll hook you up with whatever I do, and yeah, like that. You yeah. Yeah. Refer him to somebody else. <clears throat> he makes more money that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It annoys the shit out of me if, you know, like... Nah, but when I too expect people it. that are on that way, though. Right. You know, I'm sure you have some friends or people that might just come and be like, I know the owner, maybe I can get some free drinks. Oh, it's just, happened occasionally, but... Fuck them, charge them double. people out. <laughs> Let me ask you, so... What is the pr what is the proper pour at Legends? Is it is it timed out? <laughs> is it is it something that... I'm no bartender <clears throat> by any means. Okay, I'm not... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm asking I mean, like every, bar questions. Every like, just is right. going to be different no matter what. Some got a heavy hand, some don't. You don't use so the, exactly. uh, the books. You don't use the we don't use a jigger. We don't Jiggers? Use a jig. we don't it's your use jig them. or whatever it's called. Everybody pretty much by eye. Is, any, yeah. is there any Rhode Island bars besides. Is it by eye or shouldn't, shouldn't it. Would like have the big what? corporate bars like your the chilies jigs? and your. Oh, no, no, no. A lot of places like use them. Greenwood End has the this. They put the bottle in the thing. They measure, they measure it the perfectly, right? Yeah. It comes out on its own. They just squeeze the trigger and it mm -hmm. comes out. It's measured. Is there more money in in hard liquor than beer, or is there more money in beer? I think there's probably more money in draft beer. There's probably more money in fucking bottled water. That's got to uh, be your biggest big margin. Markup. It is a big market. That's a bad dude. It's two ninety nine for a case, and you pay two bucks for twenty four. Two oh, bucks for each one. Stop exposing it. Forty. Man. No, that's that's <laughs> genius, dude. That's obvious. You know, like anywhere you go. Not a case. Because I'm getting forty bottles. Oh, all right. Fair enough. You get the big cases. That's you ain't cheap. <laughs> no, but it's funny that most you know most people don't even realize that. Or like if you go to a, I went to a bar once and um, you know like I wasn't drinking though, and the dude gave me shit because I'm like a bottle of water. He's just like that's it. And, you know nothing else. And I'm like yeah. And he kind of, you know, gave me that little like oh like he expected like oh this guy's not ordering a lot and I can't I'm like dude if you understood the books you know like this is the oh, I thought you shit yourself bro it's like uh, you know I'd be back in 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> I'm like dude this is the highest margin if anything you should want me to buy all the bottles of water you know what I mean that's like a, a huge ROI but the problem is people don't order a hundred dollars worth of water no. you, you ever had any famous people go into legends like celebrity or oh yeah Josh <laughs> B-Rod <laughs> B-Rod <laughs> I mean, Omar's pretty famous, probably in his own country, right? Yeah. yeah that's well, true. Marchetti's don't don't they have across the street from you? They have like pictures and shit on the wall, right? Of famous people that have been there. But Marchetti's has been there for, like forever, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're a landmark in Grants. Yeah. Right. Well, as far as famous people come in there, 
Let's rephrase that. Yeah, Who is true. the most famous person that you've had come in there? Let's let's set the bar at Jay Messier. <laughs> Has anybody more famous than Messier been in there? <laughs> I'd have to really sit here and think about this, but for now we'll go with the mayor Messier. <laughs> The May, oh yeah, I always forget he's a fucking councilman now. We're trying to get him on the oh, show. Guido, but he, you knows Guido? Guido, oh That's my true. god, we fucking Guido love Guido. Yeah, I heard he got into um, you got hit or something by yeah, a car, right? Yeah, hit by a car. Tony said he was getting better that? though. He's doing okay. Yeah, he's where, out of the rehab. Where is that? He's yeah, a person. Where was that? Oh, oh. Uh, for right there he lives. Oh, wow. He's in rehab. He had like a broken. Per use, gents. Got to take a leak. He was pretty fucked up. Wow. The waterfalls, George. I know. Can't you like? Do you have to, you're gonna go home to yeah, take a piss? So if he's going long enough, I know what he's doing. Nah, not possible <laughs> in this bathroom. <laughs> Plus, we'll all smell it, right? So I'm like totally, totally curious about bar. Like when when somebody owns a bar, like again, maybe it's just a dream of mine because I've I've always owned on an owned bar, and I consider myself very social. I love talking to people. I love meeting new people, and in that whole thing. Um, have you ever had a problem with, let's say, or l- let me, let me put, let me ask this way. Has Erica always been the bartender? Yes. Oh, okay. So from the get go. So you've yep. never, there's never been a, uh, a, let's say a, a lapse where you're just like, you know, at this, we don't have a bartender or that person's not working out. We need to get somebody else cause they suck or whatever, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. She's, she's been there since day one. And even like a couple of times, let's say she was sick and we had nobody else. I've, I've done it. I can do it. I can jump out there and do it. I don't want to do it, but I can. How, how do you guys go on vacations and stuff? And like, who do you, like, do you leave the, the business in somebody else's hands? We or <laughs> Really? But, I'm, I'm, we're, we're trying to this year in July. We already have a, we have a vacation booked. So. But we close in July for the first week anyway. Oh, right, right, right. Every, every year we do the same thing for the painting and shit like that. And July 4th, everybody's at a cookout. So, right. So it's that always a slow week for the most part. Because I know a, a lot of business owners, they, they have this... Uh, uh, general feeling that they can't right, trust yeah, anybody sure. like unless it's family or unless it's you know <laughs> close friends or family and yeah. even close friends you got to watch after well, it's high, it's even family you got to watch yeah. after you know because everybody's trying to you can trust right so. yeah so i can imagine you know like that, that kind of sucks that as a business owner that when you're operating seven days a week that you have to you have to close down uh, well, well let me ask you do you have to close down or is that just the choice because we it really isn't to. it's just usually a slower week to begin with because of the, the holiday july 4th yeah everybody's no going around everybody's having right. cookouts and parties at their house no one's coming to the bar really hmm. i mean it'll be completely slow and dead that week so we just always chose that five days or so to close and we usually do renovations to that point I, I, I like the fact that you guys have the whole outdoor seating and the music outside. Yeah, the speakers are outside. Anybody I, ever complain about that? I wanted that? to like, ask no, about that. No, no one's. I mean, there's only like one or two houses right there across. It's the usually business. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. I mean, behind the bike track, there's houses, but they can't hear about that too much, I wouldn't think. But having um having the ability to have the outdoor patio, that's an entire like different license, is it? Yeah, or you need different it's permits cool. for that? You get a um extension permit for that or something, whatever it's called. Is it's, it? There's an additional fee. I would have moved because now you have. Insurance is probably a little yeah. different because people are allowed to drink. Yeah, is there you can a drink outside on the patio? Or, is that the tables? Is that the limit though, where the curb ends and yeah. the tables are? Yeah. I was going to say because a lot of places, if you have a drink in your hand and you try to step outside, a lot of them have smoking areas. Yep. The second you open that door, they're like, "Hey, you can't bring that drink yeah. outside." No, where with your spot, to have you them out there at that one area with the tables. No doubt. Nice, nice. And like, again, it's nice to have that pocket lot because we can use utilize that in the summertime. We do cornhole tournaments and stuff like that. So, we do the other businesses mm-hmm. ever complain that like, hey, you're taking up too much? Or no, no because most of the time on a Saturday, the, the bakery might close at two o'clock. They're doing that. Oh, the preschool, okay. the right. preschool's Saturday, probably not open. The salon, they're down the other end of the plaza. Mm-hmm. So they're not in our way anyway. Yeah, you have a really good location. You know, it's. I'm sure it's by design too. You didn't just stumble across that. You oh, know, like I used to go there periodically when it was the other place. So that's how I knew that I heard cold wind. It was for sale. So I just no kept doubt. my ear in the loop. Ever thinking about opening a Legends 2 or like anything like that? Expanding yeah. kind of like the... Just told you how much yeah. fucking regrets this now. <laughs> well, much I, maxed out with one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got, if it's, somebody were to be willing... So say somebody came and gave you an offer on the bar and the offer was one way or another good enough for you to sell it. So you got this chunk of money. What would, you, would you open another bar or would you say fuck that and do something else? Everything got a price, so I definitely would sell for the right. No, I know that you would right sell it. I didn't. I didn't ask if you would sell it. Trust <laughs> me, I know you'd sell it. I might. I don't have the money, but you might buy it. Um, my my question is: Would you venture off and do something else, or would you open another bar and build it I up would, again? 
take some of it and try to do something else other than that put some more money back into my 401k where I took a lot of before mm, yeah. <laughs> so what did you do point, before I'm this? I have to have a future at some point what did you do before owning the bar I was in the biotech business with Amgen pharmaceuticals oh really I was there for what, what does that mean when, half years. Uh, when you say you're in the biotech business like what aspect sounds well, nerdy so Amgen's off of, um, 95 that's yep. 6 they Make pharmaceutical company, pharmaceutical company. manufacturer and ship and receiving over there for them oh nice for 10 and a half years nice 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 that's a very that's one of amgen was labeled like one of the best places to work in rhode island oh, if not in the was. country nope, it was. um it's at least in i know in the, like the top hundred to yeah, best places to work successful great pay 401k benefits everything how'd you but land still that not how did you to get into it? that place don't you have to like my uncle fucking... worked there a long time ago, oh. and I heard they were hiring for certain positions, so I just put my resume in, and I had to go to an interview, and right. I guess I wowed them. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. And I got in. So. so have you, with the success of Legends, if you had the choice to open something, any kind of other business, what would it be? I've... Or, or not even opening something new. Is there anything or any plans, anything you want to add to Legends that you guys don't offer now? Not really. I mean, right now we've just been doing a lot of egg rolls, and it's working. Wow, that was really specific. Wait, so <laughs> that was so. <laughs> so if I could venture off into something else, maybe a small food hey, truck. And I'm thinking food. like ah, fucking. See, I like the way you think. Hey, I'm thinking like you know, like hatchet throwing, race cars. Nah, I wonder. <laughs> now we've been doing fantastic like, with egg the rolls. The room is too small for all of that. <laughs> oh shit! So about? what kind of egg rolls are you doing? Like what? We've done Irish egg rolls, Italian yes, egg rolls, Portuguese egg rolls. Dude, they're all Swedes, banging. Too. I can't believe I haven't eaten them. Steak and cheese. Is that something that you make in house? Yes, everything's made right there. Wow. I see. I that's, see the pictures awesome. that you guys post, and I swear to God, I just I forward them to Sasha, my girl, and I'm just like, this looks amazing. We should try it. Steak and cheese at like whatever it is. I'm like, everything sounds delicious in an egg roll, and it's so much easier for like dipping it in some yep. delicious sauce. Like we've. Those Pretty Irish ones. Put anything into an egg roll, people are gonna order them. The Irish ones are the uh, shirris and potatoes, right? With that orange kind of Chiris. sauce. No, that wouldn't be Irish. Irish is. The what was it? Beef. Those are Portuguese ones. I'm sorry. The Portuguese. The shirris and the Chiris potatoes. Chiris potato and the grisha. God, that was fucking amazing, dude. And they got like this. What, what was that sauce like that you like dipped it in? Spicy, like a spicy, spicy mayo. Must, like mayo. Oh, damn, my God. Do dude. you make the sauce yeah. in house? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, wow. That. Sriracha and so, mayo. Some, somebody's a chef. Some right. Somebody has yeah, to be. Yeah, we've got a couple good guys yeah. in the kitchen. I mean, I, I get creative. They get creative. And I'm, I'm not against their creativity if they want to try yeah. something. Oh, he is creative. What, what did I What did I order there recently? And you like, want me hey, to throw. Hey, that's to the chef over there, whoever you are. What's I ordered name? something, and I wanted you. I asked for um, pulled pork on it. On and you were like, not. Nah, you're like, nay. Something. You're like, we don't have Bacon pulled pork. Pepperoni. Yeah. So, it, um, so the bartender, she's just like, hey, you know, we don't have pulled pork. He can do bacon on it, though, if you want that. I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. Ten seconds later, he goes, hey, man, out of pulled pork. You want me to chop up some pepperoni on that for you, too? Like, just being creative. And then I'm like, fuck you. How man. are you not 800 pounds from drinking and eating well. all that food, man? He's fucking Jeez. walking around all day working. That's why I'm drinking these beefs today. That's only 98 calories. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Hey, these are fuck. actually really good. Three grams of carbs, too, guys. A lot daytime. They fucking know they're catering to alcoholics. Like, hey, if you're ashamed about getting wrecked during the day, drink these daytime. Well, this would be something that I would bring to, like, days. a beach. You Lago know? Need to, not, that's, the co that's the colors, bro. Those are those yeah, cool colors. Like that's Coronas. what I'm saying. That's why his fucking, fucking function room is well, cold like the now. Other one, they have a new one, the other one, new one now is called Natter Days. It's a natural Lago light, need is but it's daytime. called Natter Days. It's oh. a strawberry lemonade beer. Those okay. are going to be for the beach. Because you could, it's not right. It's, I hate it's, the beach. You didn't catch me at the beach ever. I don't like being hot. I'm fat. I'm I sweat easy. I don't like sand, and I don't like salt water. I don't, I don't like, like seaweed. Well, hold on. So my brother and I, we went down to South Beach, and down there, there's a big, there's a huge European, well, not even just European, fuck European. There's a huge international influence down there. It's very cultural, whatever. All the chicks down there are topless. Me and my Kubana. brother, we were, we were, we purposely laid out on the beach. Topless? <laughs> well, if that's the case, yeah. <laughs> well, we couldn't keep our fucking head down, though, like... Mm. You know, there's just titties everywhere. Nothing wrong with that. No. no. And apparently down there, I, so this is what I heard. The local, well, some of the locals told me that it is against the law to walk around, I guess, uh, indecent exposure with, with your tits hanging out. But nobody says anything just because, so you're not you know. not fucking gay, dude. <laughs> like, well, no, they complain not, about not that, that I'm saying, like. Uh, officer, the, officer. It's the culture down there. Like, I heard titties are out and. It's making me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking what, dude? I lose my mind. Speaking of, so hmm. we get down there. like We're, dri we're driving. We get down there. I get out of the car, and I notice that 
I'm looking around. I'm like, this is my first time in South Beach. I'm going, man, there's a lot of fucking gay people down here. And like, hey, cool, that's whatever. I, I just didn't realize that there's a fucking whole community population of it's like fucking Florida, San Francisco down there. He went during Pride Week. He doesn't know yet. <laughs> Bro, listen, <laughs> not and don't get me wrong, nothing against, you know, homosexuals and whatever. I'm just saying I I was shocked to see that there was a whole community down there. Literally there was a biker bar whole bunch of guys in leather hanging like just drinking hanging you know hanging over the ledge uh, the sidewalk right over a, a pride flag and i i was just, i nobody told me that you know what they told me they thought yeah go to south beach everybody's a model down there well were they models or not you can have gay models yeah, if, they're, if you're <laughs> modeling for fucking the village people <laughs> like so that's wild there was that there was a huge cuban influence down there well, that makes sense it's right near cuba right miami yeah cuba. A uh, restaurant, short swim. Everybody's playing fucking Gypsy Kings. I don't know, whatever. It's Gypsy Kings. It's a. You never heard of Gypsy Kings International? Yeah, anyway, I don't but know, International um, <laughs> House of Pancakes. Yeah, me as well. I don't know. <laughs> Gypsy uh, Kings. That might yeah. be a weird Irish thing, dude. No, no not it's even. Definitely not. Irish. Weird it's Filipino thing. A bunch of brothers that were born in like the Ireland? fucking Alps or something <laughs> like that. French, Spanish, something. They play like. Spanish music. I don't fucking know. Omar, where are you? You fucking know the fucking. <laughs> They're talking out about. there with fucking ukuleles and shit. <laughs> They're internationally known, um, but yeah, there was a whole bunch of all kinds of different colored titties out down there. <laughs> that was the of, point of my story. Do a lot of titties get exposed at the bar? At Legends, I wouldn't say a lot, but there there has been a handful of titties exposed at the bar. I've never a seen handful it. or more than like. Well, what it was of? more than a handful, but I'm saying the handful of people may have. Oh, all their right, at the bar. in number, in quantity. <laughs> yeah, um, I've never been lucky enough to be there for that. I haven't seen any titties That's there. Surprising, actually. I've well, seen a. Is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? Give it up for Lent, I think. Give <laughs> it up for Lent. Is it quarterly that you see fucking tits? That's pretty much weekly. If you, oh, okay. I know it's Every probably tough. Go to Legends. But what? I mean, you. What's the craziest thing that's happened? Like, it, was it a fight? Was it you know three chicks making out on the bar? You know, was three it somebody fucking out? Yeah, you know, was it somebody chugging? Uh, you know, a fucking bottle of like what's? I just feel like as a bar owner, man, it's got to be like reckless shit. There's been a couple decent fights. I mean. Decent fights. People leave in a stretcher and shit like that. It oh, happens, Jesus. You know? That's it's, like more than decent. That's happened that's, a while ago. <laughs> that's wild. Nothing that too new. I mean, that's pretty scary. Imagine like you're, you're just out, especially if you're not, like if you've never seen violence like that. A lot of people grow up and never see violence that close. You know, I grew up, I've seen, you know, fights, been in fights, grew up a punk in a bad neighborhood. But a lot of people, again, you know, they, they live to be 50 and 40 or 40 and 50 and they've never seen it. So imagine being 50 years old, never seeing violence that close and you're at a bar and somebody gets beat the shit out of it and they leave in a stretcher. Well, yeah, that's that's the whole trauma of it. Well, actually, when you put it in perspective, so like most people get scared of fighting, not necessarily because of the pain, but because once you punch them in the face, it hurts their pride. Like you just punched me in the face. It doesn't hurt to get punched in the face. Have you ever been punched in the face, bro? Oh, I've been punched in the fucking it face. It hurts. Have you been punched in the face? No. What, what I'm saying, it, it, it hurts, bro. It doesn't like, it hurt hurts. as much as, let's say, getting kicked in the balls. It doesn't hurt as much as... I'm afraid of that, too. Like, yeah. But I don't like Here's my point. Any so what pain. you're saying, you're saying that, like, you know, the, 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 the shock of, like, seeing violence. People that have been in a fist fight... Most of the time, you punch them in the face and it's like done. Like the, they just get shocked and they're so scared now because you punch them in the face. It's that initial trauma. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Where like you can punch me in the face all day long. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> anyway, go on. What are you I saying? think I'm 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 more concerned with the fight resulting in like injuries. You know what I mean? Like somebody hits you in the like face, or you can have a fucking broken like, orbital, yeah. broke your no, broken jaw. Like that's what I don't want to it's happen. It's so unpredictable. Like uh, you know, somebody that you could whip their fucking ass, they get a lucky shot on you, or they'll they fucking shoot kill you. you. Takes one. Oh, they yeah. just shoot you. <laughs> like yeah, that's Especially where it should be. In today's day and age, you never know. I mean, I, I, I've turned up How some you think, bars like, before. <laughs> I, I see, you know, like a lot of I, a lot of people have that philosophy of like, hey man, if you're. Uh, you know, like back in the old days, we would just fucking use our hands. We don't need weapons, blah, blah, blah. You know, people are all killed. How, what's your take on that? You know, like if two people have a disagreement, then you they know, should like, use their hands. Yeah, now, there's no reason to bring a gun or a knife to a fucking fight. I agree to an it's extent, to but what if, my opinion. well, what if you have a I disagreement? You. you know, you have a disagreement and this person, you know, doesn't want to fight you now. Like you want to fight him. He doesn't want to fight. He's not, 
you know, consenting to this like violence on him. Then you gotta come consenting home. Consenting to violence on him. Well, I'm, I'm just uh, again, I'm trying to look at it from another perspective. So you're saying be the you're, you're yeah, because not everybody is you know not everybody's like that. Not everybody's just ready to put their hands. Up. Maybe they're beta male, they're bitches, whatever you want to call them. But not everybody is just okay with saying, all right, let's go and use our hands and do this. You know, like because now I'm I'm trying to tie it to like a Second Amendment because it sounds crazy, but I I honestly think if you're willing to fight somebody and you're gonna take the steps to fight him, and you're gonna continue to hit him even if he's like I'm not about this life. I think he has every right to have a gun and shoot you. Not you personally, but like just the story I, in general. I get what you're saying, but I just if it gets to that point, I mean, you're not going to keep pulverizing this guy for something if he, he's not fighting back, and you should stop at that point. Yeah, but where's that line though? Is it one punch, two punches? I I think that as, as, I hold think on one second. As, the first punch, but he's going to fight back. Yeah. No, but him person, put yourself in his shoes now. You don't want any punches, and you if I'm all right, let me put myself in his shoes. So I don't want to fight you at all. You continue to want to fight me. I say, listen, man, I'm not going to hit you. If you throw that first punch, I don't know where you're going to stop. You know what I mean? Like, So at what point should I be allowed to just shoot you? I think the law says that. Anytime you're threatened. Right. Yes. You don't even have to throw that punch. Do you think that's It's such a tricky thing, man? It's so well, weird. No, but- th- think about this. So like, uh, if somebody's six foot seven and you're sitting down and they're standing over you telling you that they're going to kick your ass, that is... A, or kill you that that's mm. a that's a threat that's whether they threw a punch or not right i i believe you have every right to cap that fucking dude right in the face shoot him right <laughs> shoot, shoot him, him right, right in the, the dick. fucking face shoot him right in the dick you know <laughs> i mean that's in, in all honesty like uh, that's how i would take it. if somebody verbally threatens you that's good enough for me like you're i'm gonna kick your ass bang well no i'm not saying i'm gonna <laughs> shoot him i'm saying like <clears throat> You know, if I had to articulate that, let's say in court or whatever, I'd be like, I literally felt threatened because he's standing over me because he stood up. We were talking. Yeah, we were arguing. Mm-hmm. The minute he stands up, well, now you're taking it a little, you know, whatever. Now, imagine having to be the jury on that case. Like, mm, he stood up and you're, you're feeling threatened, but were you actually threatened? That, that'd be a weird one to try. Well, the, the good thing is that the other person, if you kill him, then he doesn't have his he case doesn't have a to defense. Say. He, he doesn't have a say. <laughs> Just the old, that's the, yo, hey, the, the old, yeah, the old right. Trayvon Martin case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> George, the dude, uh, what's his name? George Zimmerman? Yep. Just, hey, man, you know, I felt threatened. You know, like, I don't know what his intent was. And, well, and we don't what? fucking know, buddy, because you shot him in the face, so. That case could have went fucking, you know, totally That was a big one. Do you remember that when that was going on? It. That was a big one. If that dude lived through that, there might have been a total different I, outcome. I, I got to be honest. I think the, I think had he lived, I don't think it would change it much. I mean, how much could it change? But well, you would hear the other side of the story. No, you'd yeah, hear you'd hear his side like of the that. story. Yeah. You heard the other side of the story from, you know, the, I think uh, George Zimmerman. If you remember this case, he what he said and what he did was probably the most damaging evidence against him. You know, him telling the nine one one operator like, "I'm gonna follow him." Like, it probably wasn't he getting any worse than that. Right? Yeah, he was. The only thing that was gonna, you know, like that couldn't really get any worse based on I what Trayvon Martin could have and would have said. He would have just, you know, cooperated then and said, yeah, I, he kept following me. You know what I mean? Like, what else could he have said? So, well, I don't he, know. He could, have felt, he could have felt like his life was threatened by Zimmerman, and therefore that's why that whole fucking thing happened. Unfortunately, Zimmerman, uh, or not, unfortunately for Trayvon, he's the one that died, and now he, mm. there, you can't hear his story. But it could have been like... He, he actually could have felt like his life was threatened because he has this random strange guy just following. following him and pursuing him. I would have felt that way. Dude, that shit took over the fucking media, man. And that was before social media was as huge as, as it is now. What do you have? Like a candy on or something? Skittles? They like, just pulled a gun. I think, I think like Skittles, Skittles was the thing. Yeah, he was like yeah. drinking syrup or something. No, it was Wasn't Skittles. Something? <laughs> Skittles and an Arizona iced tea. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember for a big, you know, a big... Uh, for a long time, people were kind of painting pictures, murals of him and shit with Skittles. What do you guys think about the, the reaction? To, I, mean, I know this is an old case, but what do you think about the reaction that society had to that case? Was that, was that it was expected justified? It was expected, you know, like well, uh, a large part of the right? one community, you know, half the country, it's dividing, yeah. you know, because half the country thinks that, hey, he should go to jail for killing this kid. The other half thinks that, like, hey, man, like, you have to prove that it wasn't self-defense, you know, and it's a really tricky thing to do especially when somebody can't speak for themselves like you said do you think it's justified um 
I wouldn't want to try it. I'll tell you that. I, I try to put myself in, in his shoes. I mean, I think what he no, did was. I'm saying the reaction. So, like, this this happens. What reaction? The there are two different reactions. The societal reaction. There are two Any different reactions. Bo- okay, both of them. Whether people are saying it's justified, it's not just. Do you think that, that both sides actually have a, a point or a case or a. Yeah, I think. I, what do you, what do you, I, how do you I, feel I, I can see. I can yes. see both sides making sense. Like, I understand where both sides are coming from. You know, it's. There's no black and white answer. I don't know if it was Is right or wrong. But <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I saw this one meme after the the fucking uh, trial was over. It was George Zimmerman and his lawyers. They were smiling and the words were like, can't flim flam the Zim Zam. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> just be, dude, like immediately. The internet has no fucking conscience. Like immediately after what he was guilty. Seconds. It was yeah, just like, yeah, yeah yes. they were just like fucking, uh, I think it was just like NAACP all stars. And it had like his attorneys there, and it was just terrible, terrible shit, dude. Do, do, you, do you guys feel that like sometimes the the reaction, or let's say the societal reaction, the the outrage, the is too far? That's how I feel. That's me personally. I I, I think yeah, sometimes it, it society, it. Yeah. yeah, society fucking runs with shit. Not sometimes. that case though. I mean, it's tough to think a reaction is too far when a sixteen year old gets followed and gunned down by somebody that is unpunished. Well. Although think, tragic, you know, I mean, you know, we don't hear his side of the story, so it's hard to make a, a judgment call, like, you know? I think, I think Zimmerman's the judgment, side. yeah, and, and again, ultimately, I don't think he, you know, I don't think you can send him to jail, you know, because the way the law is, you really have to prove that he wasn't threatened, and, and it's impossible to prove how he felt. It's not alive. You know, it's, and it's, yeah, and it's, it's a feeling, you know, like you said earlier, like, if... Somebody's on top of me punching them in the face and I have punching me in the face and I have a gun. I'm probably going to shoot them right? Know, because nobody's around. If if this guy told me, hey, I'm going to punch you and then the fight's going to be over and I'm going to walk away. That's a different story. But if he's just on top of me attacking me, what happens when I go unconscious and I can't protect my head anymore or I can't protect my throat? You know, like you don't know what's going to end. You got to shoot him. It's like my life or your life at that point. Um, so I don't think you can send him to jail because you have to prove that wasn't the case. But I think the outrage comes so much because there are a lot of steps that led up to that that are easily, if he had just made one out of five decisions differently, it would have never happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were not not just like decisions that you'd have to make, decisions that were like explicitly given to you. I think that's where a lot of the outrage came. Like, like when the 911 operator says, stop hey, following. this is stop the situation. Following stop following him. You don't have any authority to be following him. And we have the police come and handle it and, you know, just get out of there. Mind your business. You know, like it's going to be handled and everybody's going to be safe if you just stop doing what you're doing. But when you like. Man, you want it, to take matters into his own hands to continue it. And well, you know what? It escalated. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. It, it just it was a very unnecessary step that it got to you know had he just followed directions i don't understand how it all translated into a white versus black thing even though zimmerman was hispanic i can simplify that for you right now if you look at a picture of zimmerman and trayvon one is white and one is black he's wasn't he hispanic a picture of him though like look at what he looks like you know like it's not like like it's like anything though there's always races getting divided mm. by everything that happens nowadays. Well, that's true. It's, it's all it's somehow it always gets and it doesn't it shouldn't have to be that way. No, but I think there's right. a perception there's a perception that there is a there's whites and then there's minorities, but even in that class of minorities there are still different um, you know, like a what's the word? Not like a totem pole, but you know, a hierarchy of a value. Not that and again, I don't agree with that, but I think the perception is there's a hierarchy of minorities in the category of non-whites you know and i i think based on the Say out again? like uh the Try media on. based on the outlook of america like it looks like the perception is blacks are at the bottom so if you have a that's why it's always like white versus black you know what i mean so if a span like you said george zimmerman and can you verify whether or not he is spanish and how spanish he is zimmerman sounds Hold jewish on. because if i'm we're not going to give him the hey i'm not white i'm spanish card if he's fucking six percent you know East European from Spain. It's white Hispanic. Mm, that's so vague, dude. What? That's super vague. I mean, vague. I know white Hispanics. I mean, there's your yeah, white but friends that have back home in Jersey oh, shit, dude. that are, I mean, like, if they if they didn't tell you that they were Hispanic, 
uh, uh, have an Hispanic ancestry, you would be like, dude, you look like you're. And I think it, you know, it's spun sure. that way because it, you know it's easy to gain traction when it's when it divides races. Yeah, it's a story. You know, like it's, it's a, it'll sell. It's a story exactly. It'll sell. It'll it'll keep momentum. I mean, here it is now. What fucking six years later, five six years later, it, we're still talking long. about it. Yeah. When did that happen, George? Two thousand eleven. Huh? Thirteen. Yeah, Thirteen. Six years, dude. That's wild. And there were so many more like it too. It's, but I think that was. Yeah, I wonder I why that one started at all. Holder. Um. Yeah, there was a couple other stories that came. A lot out of the other ones were with cops, though. That was one that you know wasn't a cop. And I, I well, think he that, thought he was. <laughs> yeah, obviously, dude. Right. He fucking not the best cop, if you ask me. <laughs> like, dude, come on, man. And, and I think of. And again, who knows how big the kid was, but I just, I can't picture ever, like, getting manhandled by a 16-year-old kid. Well, that's what you were saying earlier. If you're in a fight, if somebody catches, catches a lucky shot on you, mm. it doesn't matter how big you are, how, that, I mean, it plays into the overall scheme of things, yeah, but I mean, if a, if a 15-year-old kid came up to me and I'm not paying attention and Molly whops me, I'm going down. I'm 285 pounds. I'm going down, and he has. A, if if he gets on top of me, he could do- totally take advantage of that kind of scenario. So I mean, like, it is possible the way that Zimmerman was was describing it that this kid's on top of him. He's pounding his fucking face in. He felt like his life was threatened. True. You know, and then he fucking pops him. All right. Well, let's not beat a dead horse. How do you feel about the old that Cardi B situation? Drugging her fucking Johns and did, did robbing him. Story today that the guy said he, getting drugged and robbed by her was better than listening to her music. Oh, yes. <laughs> shit. So, I, actually, I think that we probably that pretty valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, I mean, that shit he's was got funny. A legit story though. I don't know, man. I don't. I, I don't hate kind of a couple of her to? songs. Mostly old school hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Hey, did you know about that that dude that that just died? That rapper that died. I've heard the name, but I don't know nothing about it. I've never heard the name, and I see I've like the way it's being talked about. And nothing about. I thought he was gone. I don't know the way everybody's posting. Yeah, the way it's being talked about is that he's super relevant. I I don't really listen to any new hip hop or rap, but it seems like that's not really why his life has been celebrated so much, dude. It's you know what he did for the community and what he, he gave also back. He made a tweet earlier that morning before being shot. Something about yeah. enemies or whatever. Well, apparently he, he, he turned his life around over the course of his life. And not only that, I, I think he came out with music and kind of innovated how to market it. He was actually giving away his free, uh, so, something like this. He he was at, No, he was charging $100 per like CD or something like that. Jay-Z ended up buying 100 of them or something like that. You, you, can you pull up that story for me, George? Why, how he, like, totally changed how <laughs> music he, is marketed. Who he is, what his name is. And, uh... Yeah, he released it for $100, and then Jay-Z bought $10,000 worth of copies. Or, or, yeah, something like that. And, like, he... Like, that kind of, like, solidified his his name in the hip-hop, like... Why did he release him for $100? That sounds like an expensive CD. Because he was giving away for... Something like that for free. He was give, giving his music away for free on some kind of platform or... And then he goes, everybody that's already a follower of mine, if you want the music, you got to pay $100 per whatever. And then he sold out. Like, Jay-Z ended up buying a whole bunch of them. And then... Can you look up the motive that? I just, I can't understand why you would just at one point decide that you can sell your CD for four times, Honestly, you know, the... Honestly, CD is yeah. $20-something dollars probably. First of all, who the fuck's hundred. still buying CDs? Well, second like of all... That. It was in 2013. Okay. That oh, he's yeah. been around for that long, huh? He's been around for a while. How have I never heard of this guy? I've heard of other people too, like Lil, well, Lil Peep. You are like I've seen older. that name and shit. Oh, there's so many names. But there, there's yeah. names like History there's names that just like ring a bell. If you say it, like I'll be like, all right, I've read that or heard it or you know seen a picture of somebody with that name on him. This what was this guy's name? N- Nessie Hustle, Nipsey Hustle. Nipsey Hustle. I've never even heard the name, but he sounds like he was a good dude. Like the way everybody's talking about him. I mean, like I have a daughter who's almost sixteen and she listens to all this new stuff. Nipsey Hustle, mm-hmm. right? She it's coming out with these names I've never heard of half these people. Yeah, uh, I'm the same exact way. How, how old are you? Can you peep, uh, peep his most yeah. popular song, George? Let me hear a little, little clip. You can't even Google him. So you grew up like in the. It's he was in the West Coast hip hop scene in the mid 2000s. It's like when his notoriety was. Oh, so he's not like. Doesn't does he still make music? No, it's about the, the most of it's about like this community shit that he did with for every for the community. Network. Gotcha. Okay. So all these. See, interesting. I, I have a problem with the with 
total empathetic views. Like, uh, granted, I, obviously, a guy lost his life, but Pita. the way that we me. idolize somebody like, uh, granted, he's he's a, a famous rapper, but the way that we idolize is just it, it's kind of shameful to me. I mean, like, I, I blame hip hop for hip hop's problems. Now, you grew up in the '90s. You know, you're 39 years old. You you know about Biggie and Tupac, and you were there. You you know not there, but I'm saying like just like I was. That whole controversy. I mean, you can't talk. You can't glorify gunplay and being in the hood and being a gangster and and all that shit, and then not expect for that to be a part of the culture. Like a lot of it comes full circle. With yeah, the, what they rap about. Yes, it comes around and happens most of the time. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, like, and I'm not saying that Nipsey, whatever his name, Hustle, he was rapping about that. But if you're part of that culture, like, you know. I'm not saying everybody should be should you, you, hey expect to get shot. I'm saying yeah, you're not invincible. Yeah. yeah, and when you're when you're advertising parts of that culture, when when you think when you're saying it, you know, it's cool to fucking drive around with guns and shit like that, and then you get popped. Well, you're a fucking idiot to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't necessarily blame. Uh, you know, I, I look at it like the hip hop culture kind of created their own fucking problems, and now they're they sometimes they feel the wrath of that, yeah. and, and that might be insensitive to Nip, Nipsey. What's what's his name? Nipsey, Nipsey Hustle, Nipsey bro. Hustle. Damn, I, that might be insensitive to the fact that like you know Nipsey he just. Russell, but yeah, I Nipsey guess. Hustle. <laughs> yeah, like to, to Tipsy Muscle, that, but Nipsey Hustle. Like titty muscle. <laughs> hey, speaking of titties, you see that? Uh, speaking of titties, that fucking massage spot in Pawtucket got closed down. They were giving out the happy endings. I was they, reading they that. Two in Providence still over the weekend. Where are they, sir? Two of them just happened in Providence. Oh, they got shut down. God damn it! Do we have nothing for ourselves anymore? But I thought it was uh interesting, dude. I, so I'm reading the article, and this fucking you know Harmony Spa in Pawtucket gets closed down because they're doing Ill- illegal prostitution, right? Is what they call it in the back so massage poly you get, it's fucking you know happy ending massage is all it is and i'm seeing all of the employees that got arrested in their fucking i'm like what bro like i couldn't pronounce one of them. i'm like yeah I, well they're all like asian women obviously but they're obviously huh yeah i mean it's it was a chinese massage parlor so east so, indian women don't jerk off other people so i'm like fuck it but they're not like put it this way if you were going to pay to have a woman jerk you off, you'd probably have a a set standard of like physical requirements that you'd want her to meet, beauty wise, right? Like you wouldn't uh, just go. <laughs> if you're getting jerked off in the back of a place in Kentucky, I'm pretty sure you're <laughs> your Dude. your standard is pretty low. <laughs> and that fucking low standard, bro. There, hands. They're, yeah, <laughs> she's but I was alive. Like, I was shocked because I'm like, dude, at, at this point, it's like just go watch porn and jerk yourself off. Why are you paying to have? This, you know, woman that is not that attractive jerk you off. What's the point? Maybe she gave a good massage. Bro, do you like really like seriously Fair? if some if a chick It didn't make jer- sense to me. If a hand came out of a fucking hole and jerked you off, would you care? Like who cares what they look like? I just use my own hand. Well I'm saying if you didn't like What if that hand's hand? a dude's hand? There's a lot of if I don't see what it is, it's a lot of things could go wrong, man. I Yeah, what if it's a fucking paw? Who gives a shit? <laughs> Rug burn. Like Rug burn. Like dog paw come out of the thing. <laughs> oh, you got a sick mind, bro. I do. Sick, I do. sick mind. You ever been in one of those spots? A little happy, no, happy I, ending massage parlor? Bro, I can't. I don't get into all that. Like, and I'm not knocking anybody that does. Actually, I know some friends that go, they frequent them all day, every day. Who? I'm not mentioning names, <laughs> but um, I can't. I can't get into that. I just, you know, I don't know what it is. I'm just like. I don't know. It's a weird thing, I think it's man. Like a marshmallow. It's a weird thing that. What? It's a weird thing that the massage is completely legal, right? They're touching you, rubbing your skin, certain doing whatever they want. To, but the second they touch a certain piece of skin on your body, now the government deems that illegal. You can no longer because do this. Not taxing on it. That's you can I no mean. longer do this. The whole massage is okay, but the second you decide to give him pleasure in a way that is really good pleasure, you can't do it anymore. I mean, the they whole make it legal and tax them on, and they'll be fine with it. The whole, That's how right. do, you, do you think as as prostitution should be legal? Within limits, I'm assuming you, you got to be tested frequently. I'm assuming. Well, you regulated go around fucking. Yeah, fucking but wouldn't that everybody. wouldn't but wouldn't that be on the um, 
The I mean, that, yeah, the, not not the customers, but the place of business. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. Like yeah, and it, it could be just like how well, you, you know your establishment. Prostitute. Right? You could. I don't. I don't. Any dog. Any prostitutes ever. <laughs> but it's just like your place. You know, your place of business. The. Uh, it's, just, it's just like your place. The health inspector. Condom breaks. <laughs> the health inspector comes in and gives you guidelines that you have to follow. You know what I mean? That it could be the same thing for a place that like a brothel. You know, it's just a it's a weird fucking societal taboo thing we have on sex. Like it's so bad. Yeah. Think of prostitution, dude. There's no more pure and mutually beneficial transaction ever, dude. Like. You're getting exactly what you want, and you're okay with paying for it. She's getting paid for it. It's like, dude, it's such a consenting adult transition. I mean, um, transaction. Like, I don't understand why it's illegal. It should be legal. Along with many other fucking things like drug use, and I mean, like, has yeah, like if you're a consenting adult, you should be able to do what the fuck you want. I uh, I agree with you. I. Mm. Anyways, you got anything else, man? Ricky, anything for us? Good. All right, let's wrap this bitch <laughs> up. Yeah, let's, let's wrap this bitch up, man. It's been going for a little bit. A beer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say thanks for coming, man. You know, Thank I, you I appreciate it. Me. It's been fun. We uh, learned a little bit about you that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, other than that, Legends, guys, what's the address? Park Ave. 1458 Park Ave. 1458 Park Ave. You find them on Facebook. Uh, I can tell you personally, man, the, the food there is phenomenal. It's a... Uh, I don't usually go, like Jay said earlier, something about bar food. You know, if I go to a bar, I expect bar food. But I know if I go to Legends, I can get an actual good fucking meal. Um, reasonably priced, too. You know, it's not nothing crazy. Uh, other than that, you know, thanks for listening. And we out this bitch. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to episode 16. And just to wrap this up. Uh, thank you to our endorsers, Division Street Auto, Tops Electric Showroom and Gallery, Onyville Tire, JW and Son Construction, and Donkey Dodgers Poker. Um, if you need to contact any of them, and just remember that if you mention the J Squared Podcast, you heard the ad on the J Squared Podcast, you will get a discount. Um, and if you need to contact them, just listen to the beginning of this episode. All right, guys. Thank you.